Hi, my name is Hal Bettel and this video addresses the importance of using video in education. The use of the video in education is not new. Film and video have been used since I was a child. These videos are professionally edited and were usually of high quality. Today, video in education is offered of lesser quality for two primary reasons. Ironically though, the importance of video is greater now than in the past. Students are used to seeing video used in courses. They are used to visually stimulate the student and engage them with a the medium with which they are very familiar. In the recent past, many online courses were restricted to written or typed communications. As connection speeds became faster, computer capacity has increased and the technical skills of students has progressed, it is reasonable to use video in any course. Video allows students to use their other senses, visual and auditory, to receive information as if it were actually in the classroom. Video allows nonverbal communications to occur as well. Further, video can be used for demonstrations as well as lectures. Video can be stored so a student can play back the lecture or demonstration as often as needed. Demonstrations are less likely to be repeated many times in the classroom. The first reason for lesser quality is the tools used to create these videos. Unless one has a high quality, often very expensive system, to create high resolution video, there is not much that can be done. The second issue with creating video for classes is the skill of the folks creating the videos themselves. These can and should be addressed by the creator of the videos. There are some simple steps you can follow to enhance the quality of the videos. Otherwise, you get videos of kids bouncing on the bed as you often see posted to YouTube or Facebook. First, have a plan. Decide the purpose and basic content of the video. In industry, this is known as storyboarding. Then create a script. Following your script, record the clips for the video. After that comes the editing by removing outtakes, flubs, and sequencing the remaining parts into one video. When doing that, you also add transition effects. Finally, you add any overlays and credits. But remember, before you start anything, you should have a script showing everything that is to go into the video, including things that are to be added in post-production. Let's move on to the script. As noted, whenever I am creating a video, I plan it out. Then I create a detailed script for the video. So here is the actual script used for this video. As you can see, it had to have been written before I started recording. Otherwise, how could you be seeing it in this video? I'd like to take a quick review of the script and just show you the planning that went into this. I do have at the top information about it, what will become my opening credits, the various sections. I do have actual stage direction, if you will. I also have transition effects that I plan to add and where it will become necessary for me to actually cut or stop doing what I'm doing. Continuing through, we'll see that it also takes us on a tour of the utilities, some overlays you'll see added uh, as you get to the various parts, and pretty much the text of what I had intended to discuss going through this video. In essence, the entire video was scripted, laid out, all the way down through the conclusion, the final settings of the end, and my closing credits. Uh, continuing through the process, there was very little left to um, doubt as to what I was going to actually create. Now, let's take a tour of some of the video editing tools and applications I use when creating videos. I will not be debating their use. This is just to give you an idea of the types and features some of them actually provide. Windows Live Movie Maker is a free product from Microsoft. It is usually included with the current versions of Windows, such as Windows 7 and Windows 8. If not, it can be downloaded for free. For those that are Mac users, iMovie is a comparable and free product. I have used it and it is very similar to the features of Windows Live Movie Maker. Both of these products can be used to create videos, but you do get what you pay for. Their features are a bit simplistic, but functional for simple videos. I did not use either of these applications for this video as I prefer to use some other applications that provide additional features. But let's take a quick look at Windows Live Movie Maker. You'll notice that it does have an appropriate video bin where I've preloaded a video. Again, you might notice this person. And from there you can see the actual clip that was laid out. In this particular version of editing, you'll notice that the soundtrack and the video track are coupled together. I can, though, go in and find a point within the item and then using options uh, go through and split them. There was, there was edit. I can go through and find points in the actual clip, split it, multiple splits, and then go through with copy and paste and cut, 
remove particular items within it. Uh, I also have the ability to add animations, transitions, and as well as resequencing sequences. Uh, the last item and option I have in here is the ability to finally with the project go through and start saving the movie. Again, with the limited screen setup, not every option is being uh, shown at this point. Uh, both of these products are geared to the platform for which they were created. There is some cross compatibility, but for that I use products that have fuller and more platform independent set of features. Let's move on to a product I do use called Camtasia. Note I recorded the Camtasia clip before I recorded this clip. Camtasia is a product from TechSmith and it does cost money. I use it for several purposes. It has excellent screen recording features and allows greater manipulation of the soundtrack. For my videos, I use it to record screenshots when doing demonstrations and sound enhancements. In fact, I'm using it to record the screen right now. I also use it as a media converter. It allows separation of the video and audio tracks so I can create full videos or simple audio files. I will save videos in a variety of formats including those for handheld devices. Like Windows Movie Maker, it has the basics, but each basic feature has a fuller range of options from which to select. Taking a quick tour, we can see that I do have the clip in, and I have a video track, and I have the audio track. You might actually recognize this person from a previous course. In addition, I can find parts within the soundtrack or the video track, and through things like edit, I can split and start clipping out flubs outtakes, rearrange things, whatever I might need to do with the item. I can also go through and add in appropriate um, overlays. I can go in and add credits and transitions as well. For me, Camtasia is best used for screen recording. For camera recording and editing, I prefer to use VideoPad Editor. VideoPad Editor is a product from NCH Software. It is also a product you have to pay for. Like Camtasia, it has additional features to find easy to use. The two primary sets of features I use are the camera recording and editing. The input devices I can use with VideoPad Editor allow me to select from integrated cameras and microphones, separate independent devices, or headphones. I use it to record the introduction and conclusion sections where you see me on camera and add additional soundtracks when needed. I also like to use it for editing. Camtasia will do the same things when it comes to editing but I just find the interface of the VideoPad Editor easier to use. VideoPad Editor has a uh, video bin as you can imagine. It has the video track. Note it has the multiple soundtracks that are quite possible to use here. It has easy to use editing features such as the timeline and split capability which I'm going to undo with Control Z. It also allows me to quickly add subtitles, it allows me to add transition effects, it allows me to add overlays, and ultimately save the movie uh, or render it into its final version. As we have seen, there are a variety of video creation applications available. If you are going to create a lot of videos, then you should find the application that really meets your needs. Having a suite of these applications allows one to use the best features of each to create a video. Using multiple applications will require moving a bunch of files around. The importance of using video today cannot be overstated. Today's students have come to expect it in their courses, especially online courses. They allow for verbal and visual forms of communication in these courses. This is in addition to the traditional written form of communication used in most courses. The online course comes closer to what a student would see and hear in a face-to-face -face course. What might be fun to note, just like movie making, the clips in this video were not recorded in the order in which you viewed them. They were not even recorded on the same day. The demonstrations were done first, then the introduction followed by the conclusion. The script you just saw a few minutes ago was the full script. As I am writing this, I don't know how long the video will be in length. I note this because it is possible the script is larger than the video. As of now, all I have is a plan and a script. Let's find out what actually makes it into the video. I won't know that until all the clips are recorded and edited together. When one is practiced in the making of videos, they become an important part of a course. When used with webinars and blogs, an online course becomes more traditional looking and interesting for the student. But a word of caution here. If you are going to make videos, try to make them with some level of quality by planning, editing, and, editing of, and adding appropriate effects. Remember, anything worth doing is worth doing right. So no bouncing on the bed. Thank you.